All right, all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to uh, our elders and apostles, Jim Mass, New York, and honors to you brothers out there that's teaching the truth. All right, this is part 10. Native Americans marked as Israel. All right, and uh, I'm going to start right here. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 49. Yeah, how about you bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fly, a nation whose tongue thou shalt understand, right, man? And the uh, so called white man did come from uh, a far away land, Europe, man, uh, which is very far uh, uh, from uh, this land called uh, America, which is uh, New Canaan, and which is called Azareth. You read. Uh, Second Ezra chapter 13. Azareth means far away, basically. All right. Uh, as swift as the eagle represents the nation of Edom, the so called white man. Edom means red. And um, you can find out the eagle represents Edom. You read uh, Obadiah chapter 1. And nature who turned, thou shalt understand, right? Because the so called white man, um, he brought uh, Israelite translators. Uh, to talk to the so-called Native Americans, you know, uh, because many Native, so-called Native American, Trevor Gad, they spoke uh, like different dialects of Hebrew, all right? The, uh, some spoke the Ishmael dialect, some spoke the original uh, Paleo-Hebrew dialect tongue, some spoke the Chaldean dialect, you know, all right? Um, verse 50, a nation of fierce countenance we should not regard a person of old, no show favor to the young, right, man? All right, and I'll first show you this book, uh, Wheel History 101. And you brothers need to get this book uh, by John Richard Stephan. It's got a lot of fire. And brothers, uh, over the years, saw me bring this book out before. All right, page uh, 172 and 173. All right, I'm going to. Uh, read right here the threat uh the threat was essentially last just talking about the uh how esau used to uh make the guy that saw called native americans a threat to uh to the u.s population you know uh the threat was sensationalized probably because it made good reading sold new papers and magazines but also because it helped justify removal of Native Americans from their lands, right, man. And um, he basically talking about Esau will lie on uh, the tribe of Gad just to take their land and stuff, or just basically have an excuse just to kill them, all right? <clears throat> um, it says right here, uh, and what may very well be the worst atrocity in American history, the U.S. Army attacked a band of peaceful Native Americans who was under protection of a U.S. fort and butchered them. Right, man. And this go with a prophecy, man. And you know, you read the the title of this uh of this this chapter. It says, "What the U.S. Army murders Native American." What is the U.S. Army? True. All right. Going with the prophecy of, of uh, It says what Genesis 49 and 19 Gad a troop to overcome him but he shall overcome at last and and uh what was the troop the troop is an army all right <clears throat> you know and what it says right here the US Army murders Native Americans Master Genesis 49 and 19 so it's talking about the Gadites over here in the Western Hemisphere it's not talking about the guys over there in uh, West Africa, you know, uh, over there, especially Nigeria, man. Uh, you brothers, you guys over there, 
you know, you're still part of our family, but it matches the Gattis over here, the Western Hemisphere, man, the so-called Native American. All right, I'm going to read again. The U.S. Army murders Native Americans in what may very well be the worst atrocity in American history. The U.S. Army attack had banned a peaceful Native Americans who was under protection of a U.S. fort and butchered them as a holder on the American flag, although this was just one of many hidden massacres that occurred during the Indian Wars, the circumstances surrounding the tragedy make it particularly horrible. For years, Chief uh, Matava told Black Kettle was the leading advocate for peace with the U.S. government among the Cheyennes. All right, and uh, it's a lot if I pronounce his name wrong, you know. Uh, in 1863, he China chief Lean Bear and a number of other chiefs were invited to Washington D.C., where they met the President Lincoln. All right. <clears throat> In Washington, Black Kettle was given a huge U.S. flag and was told that if he flew that flag, no soldier would ever fire at him. All right. And uh, <laughs> we'll prove that you know that's not true, man. All right. This guy uh, Esau, he's a, he's a damn liar, man. All right. <clears throat> what it says? It says Psalms fifty-eight and three. The wicked are strange from the womb; they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. All right. <clears throat> um. He was very proud of his flag, always flew it above his teepee when at permanent encampment. They were also given some medallions to wear and paper to certify that they were friends of the United States. All right, which was another lie, man. All right, because Esau, he, he's our enemy, man. What it says, uh, <clears throat> it says Psalms 83, all right. And what they got listed on there, Psalms 8 through the Tabernacles of Edom, the so called white man. All right. So, you know, they're not our buddies, man. All right. All right. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Slop. All right. Then in May of 1864, they were told that about. 100 soldiers with two canyons would go to see them to find out what they wanted wearing the medal Lincoln had given him and carrying the papers they set out. When the soldiers saw the Cheyennes, they landed in formation and Lean Bear told others to wait so as not to frighten the soldiers they your coach alone and warn the warriors. Wolf Chi later said, uh, I learned from Lieutenant um, it said J.J. Jackson that the Indians had been opposed for the purpose of making a treaty. The Congress of Confederate States had passed a law declaring extermination of all hostile Indians. Ye will therefore use all means to persuade the Apache or any other tribe to come in on purpose of making peace. And when you get them, get them, get them together, kill all grown Indians, I mean all Gadites, and take the children prisoners. And, um, and sell them to the the freight expense of killing Indians by whiskey and such other good as may be necessary for the Indians. And I will order vouchers given to cover the amount spent and leaving nothing undone and ensure success having a sufficient number of men allow no Indian to escape. All right. <coughs> All right, so you can't trust these damn devils, man. All right. <coughs> It says right here. It says what? It says Psalms 55 and 21. The words of his mouth were smooth and butter, but war was in his heart. His words were soft and oil, yet they drawn sword. Right, man. All right. <coughs> Uh, Lean Bear told us warriors to stay where we are so as not to frighten the soldiers while you go forward to shake hands with the officer and show his papers. When the chief was within only 20 or 30 yards of the line, the officer called out in a very loud voice, 
and the soldiers opened fire on Lean Bear and, and the rest of us. Lean Bear fell off his horse and right in front of the troops and Star, another Chinese, also fell off his horse. The soldiers then rode forward.